Come along on the ride as Alistair and I taste our way through the Daintree region. Cheers. 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 Magic. Magic. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> Big bottoms up. <laughs> bottoms up. And we journey off the bitumen along the road less gravelled. Wild, scary country, isn't it? Yes. Hello again, welcome to Queensland Weekender for another Saturday afternoon. It's fantastic to have your company. Well, I think you'll agree there's a fair bit of wow factor in that view, particularly on a day like today. It's exceptional, isn't it? We're on the Captain Cook Highway, a scenic drive that winds its way along the mountains between Cairns and Port Douglas. And not only is it scenic, but it's the gateway to the exotic and the exceptional. Alistair. We are not in Kansas anymore. I, look at that. That could be Hawaii. It could be Tahiti. If we didn't have so much to do, I could stay here all day. You're right, old mate. I think we should stop hanging around. Hanging around? Get in the car. <laughs> It's a 75 kilometre highway, short by Australian standards, but big in attractions. The rugged coastline conceals white palm-lined beaches, as well as a number of secluded resorts. Hey, g'day guys, welcome to Taylor. Oh. Thank you, bartender. Thank you very much. Right. Enjoy your stay with us, guys. Tala Beach Lodge is a luxurious escape 15 minutes south of Port Douglas. Its bungalows are perched amongst the trees, decorated in warm tones, airy and private. They offer a perfect platform to appreciate this part of the world. Only a short walk away is a two kilometer stretch of beach with panoramic views. Here's a bit of food trivia for you. The name coconut comes from the old Spanish or Portuguese for monkey face. Not too difficult to see why. And another thing, if you find a coconut that's washed up on the shore, don't think it's not going to be any good. If you shake it and you can hear the, the coconut water inside, it's good for drinking, it's good for eating. Yum. Of course, Tala Beach isn't the only stretch of sand that you'll find coconuts washed up on the shore, but it's the only resort where you'll find a coconut tour. Yep, you got him? Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Johansson has been named one of Australia's most eccentric tour guides. As the resort's gardener, he's responsible for all 650 trees on the property. Now, we're going to try a couple of different coconuts today, and everyone's got a different taste. Oh, sweet. It's cold. Incredibly fresh and very refreshing. Guests learn quickly on the tour that coconuts have many different uses and flavours at different ages. As it starts to age, it starts to develop a flesh inside the nut. And as this happens, you get to about six months of age and the liquid inside becomes then nutty, sweet and actually fizzy at the same time. If you pour it into a glass, it looks like lemonade. And that's my favourite to drink, which is, we'll try that next. The most important part of this husking of the coconut, this is it, right now. Ready for this? Are you sure you're ready for this? Yes. OK, you hand me the coconut and I do this. I welcome you into the world of manliness. In the true sense of a great uh, Australian storyteller, you've got these, you know, international visitors from all over the world captivated for nigh on two hours talking about a tree. Yeah, I it's know. Quite, it's quite I know. amazing. I know, it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the thing... And I say this on some of the tours also. Imagine, imagine picking up a carrot and saying, let's do the carrot tour for two hours. <laughs> what are you going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. The colour. <laughs> the most interesting coconut product is left until last. So this, scientifically, is known as a historum, or commonly known as a coconut apple or plum. It's a, it's a coconut marshmallow or yeah. coconut... 
cotton wool or something. <laughs> so it's in its raw state here, but you'd use it in some way. You could imagine being a sponge, it'll, it'll, it'll draw flavours from other things in also. In addition to the edible offerings on the coconut plantation, Tala Beach Lodge has plenty of other dining options. The stunning restaurant serves up a la carte breakfast, lunch and dinner. Where upon request, the chefs will whip up a picnic basket to enjoy at a location of your choice. Got a cheeky wee white for you here. I'm gonna pour it with my right hand. That must have been bad. And I'm gonna just duck away. I will be back with a very special main course. Are you serious? This is all yours. It's all for me. What a guy. I'm going to cook for my friend Dean Miller. I'm going to cook him what I think is really the very best fish you get in the tropics, and that is barramundi. This is a farmed fish from Daintree Saltwater Barramundi. It really is a very, very special piece of seafood. And I'm going to treat it very, very simply, as you should do with your seafood. And I'm just going to poach it in some freshly made coconut cream that's going to then be punctuated with flavours like garlic, ginger, kaffir lime, chilli and lime. You can sort of taste those flavours already. A bit of coriander as well. The coconut cream and spices make for a flavoursome bath in which to poach the barramundi. Five minutes on a low simmer is all it needs before Dean's enjoying dinner. I could smell that from the beach and it smells fantastic. Your timing is perfect. Herbie's shack is open. Dinner is served. Oh my goodness. Hmm. You know where you are in the world, you know? Tropical North Queensland. That's where we are in the world. A masterpiece. You heard the man. The rainforest between Port Douglas and Cooktown is the traditional land of the Gugu Yalunji people. And it's where the country's newest cultural experience has been created. Open this year, the Mossman Gorge Centre employs local people and offers guests an insight into Indigenous culture. There's a real sense of, of pride amongst the, the team yeah. that I've met today. Yes, there is absolutely pride. Uh, that comes from, I think, the fact that, you know, everybody knows each other, grew up together, and this is their place. We're a part of this community. So, yeah, it's, um, and, we, and we work really hard as a team to, um, you know, support each other and build each other up, you know, in confidence and in our job day to day. The traineeship program extends to all aspects of the business, and what a great training ground it is. Aspiring chefs are kept on their toes in the centre's busy cafe. It's open for lunch and light refreshment seven days a week. Tell me what it means to you to have this opportunity afforded to you at the centre. Um, I, I really, I really I feel grateful for it because, you know, it's like you said, it's uh, I'm a local and yeah, um, I like to be a role model for. You know, the, the local kids around here. In an aim to cut down on traffic to the gorge itself, all visitors now ride on buses from the centre. Return travel is $4.80, or there's the choice to join one of the Dreamtime walks for an extra cost. Harold Taylor is an elder of the local community who spent his childhood years learning about the rainforest from knowledge passed down through generations. Rainforests are um, more like a supermarket, yeah, and um, supply all the stuff like uh, berries and fruits and um, we have our own pharmacy hitting in that backyard, in, uh, which is great. But what the women used to do with the walnut, once they crush it all up, they will stick it in a big basket, soak it in running water for a week, sometime longer, and as they take it out, they will dry it out and they'll store it away. And as these nuts been crushed up and dried out, they will turn into powder like flour and they bake their bread. Didn't rise flat, but they still had their bread. Wow. Crush nuts. Crush nuts. A walk like this is a true lesson in the diversity of the rainforest and the resourcefulness of the Gugu Yalanji people. A lot of places along here spread it thick with rainforest. So what rainforest people normally do, they will burn a little patch of grass and they use it as a trap. And as the new green grass started to shoot out of the ground, the wallabies come for this nice green feed. And that's when they used to go back with their boomerang and plus their spear, and that's how they used to get their feed. All that talk about food has made this chef agree to something 
that he's never done before. <laughs> Come on, Chef. Oh, my Step Lord. Plate, oh, my this? Lord. Never in my life. <laughs> a bit just fell off. What's that? It's the poo. That's... What? That's the poo. That's the poo. Yeah. Which is what you're probably doing at this point as well. <laughs> so what we normally do, we just take the head off. Yes. And then just take him down like that. What will happen, you can feel it moving around as, as you go down. <laughs> just take it down. Do I swallow it? Do I, do I chew it? You can chew it or you can just swallow it down like that. I think I might just eat it like an oyster. Oh, yeah. you should chew it. Chew it. Dean Miller. Go on, chew it. Take it down. It's got a bit of soy sauce on it. <laughs> Look that way. <laughs> it tastes savoury, it tastes salty, it tastes like grass, it tastes like a snail, more tender than a snail. It does not taste like chicken. Okay. Harold, it does not taste like chicken. Okay. Get one for Dean, get one for Dean, get one for Dean. <laughs> it's sort of like wet sawdust as well. <laughs> it's still going. That's good. I won't be rushing back for that experience anytime soon. But next time I'm in need of a wash, I may just be inclined to try the soap leaf. <laughs> Look at that! It lathers up. I don't believe it. Oh my goodness! So, um, you know, it's good for the skin, good for the water. That's why you've got such smooth skin, Harold. That's correct. Dean Miller, there's the soap, there's the bathtub. Are you game? Well, look, I even brought a towel. But, uh, no, just telling the Harold, when it rains here, the creek rises really quickly, and so the gorge is in flow. Yeah. And I don't recommend that you swim on a day like today. A hazard reduction for you and I, and a hazard reduction <laughs> for the viewers as well, I think. Yes. <laughs> but if it was sunny and no rain, we'd be in there. Secure passage on the Daintree River Car Ferry and you're on your way to somewhere special. The remote townships of Cape Tribulation and its surrounds are pristine. And it's here that visitors can almost hear the heartbeat of the rainforest itself. It rained last night here like it only can in North Queensland. It was so heavy on the roof, but I've woken up feeling really refreshed. It's like the, uh, the rainforest is squeaky clean. It's so nice to be woken up by all those exotic animals. I mean, it just never fails to excite me, Dean Miller. Yeah, actually those exotic animals are pretty close. And the birds aren't the only wildlife here in abundance at Lickhaven. The motel and campground has rooms starting at just $99 a night. Included in a stay is the opportunity to get up close with some of the rainforest's inhabitants. What's this guy's name? Um, Cuddles. Cuddles. <laughs> You want to have a go? No, thank you. No, 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 I'm, I'm happy right here. No, I did not want to have a go. I did not want to have a go. The park is owned and run by Scott and Jody Hamill. The tropics beckoned these native Victorians some years ago. So too did the native wildlife, for Scott has amassed himself quite the collection. Now, we'll see if she's hungry today. Let's see if we can get her down here, eh? What's on the menu? Uh, today's a bit of, bit of wild pig, hair and all. That vibration you can hear, Doris, that's my heartbeat. Ooh. Animal feeding is held every day at 9am and is available to guests by donation. A short drive north from Link Haven reveals more surprises. The roadside stalls are a particular pleasure of mine, but this is the only time I've seen tea offered. How cool. And I'm hard-pressed thinking of a better location to grow it. The Daintree Tea Plantation borders World Heritage Rainforest and has been operated by the Nicholas family since 1978. But I'll tell you what does make the eye when you see a plantation like this is how beautiful it looks. Isn't it? And part of the process of creating tea is manicuring these, uh, these magnificent leaves, isn't it? Yeah. yeah they've, got, they've got to be cut at the right height every time okay. and, and on time every time. And that's a fairly regular process. How often are you down here harvesting? Every fortnight. Every two weeks? Yeah. Throughout the season? Yeah. So is your garden schmick at home? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he brews a mean pot yeah, of tea yeah, all yeah. Harvest is in full swing from September to May. 
And during this time, Greg Nicholas runs a busy processing shed where leaves are dried and flavours extracted. So, Greg, take us through the process. You don't actually cut the leaf, you, you crush it in one of these things. Yeah, the leaf's got to be crushed, not cut. If you crush the leaf, if you cut the leaf, you get nothing out of it. Oh, okay. Because the goodness of the leaf is on the inside, so you have to crush it to move it to the outside. There's a myth that the tea bags contain inferior tea, but it's not so, says Greg. Rather, the type of tea is determined by the size of tea leaf post-processing. So this is the end of the stage. It's all dried now, and this gets ordered now into three different grades. So take us through it. The coarse one there? That's the coarsest one there. That'll go into your teapot. Teas. Your finer one goes into the tea bags, and then the middle one can be spread either way to get densities correct. Um, fancy a cuppa? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, why not? Daintree tea is available at Woolworths, IGA and independent stores. Greg's wife, Babe, makes a great iced tea. Her secret is to add minimal sugar. As a standard cup, a Daintree tea is low on bitterness, so doesn't need milk. Cheers. Cheers. Magic. <laughs> bottoms up. Big bottoms up. <laughs> So I've got this bucket list of four-wheel drive adventures that I'm slowly but surely ticking off. There's the Telegraph track that leads to Cape York, there's the Streslecki and Udnadatta tracks that lead out of Queensland and down into South Australia. And on today's show, another one of the great ones, the Bloomfield track, which heads out of the Daintree and north towards Cooktown. But on a drive like this, you need some strategy, you need tenacity, you need to think adventure, and have lots and lots of courage. And Mark has all that and more. Dean Miller, no, air conditioning, 24 degrees, <laughs> cool drink. Have you got any cold water on board? I'm a bit thirsty. Adventure North Tours offer intrepid travelling in style. The company offers day trips to Cooktown with pickups from Cairns, Port Douglas and Cape Tribulation. Adventure North's large four-wheel drive vehicle is designed to take in the best of the scenery whizzing past, including multiple creek crossings. Lunch for this mob is at the Lion's Den, a popular watering hole for adventurers on their way north. Here's some of those intrepid four-wheel drivers that didn't quite make it to the Lion's Den. Have a look at this scary stuff. That's that, that, that's that creek without the paddle. Isn't it that one? <laughs> Talking boating emergencies, it was our next location where James Cook famously had one of his own. An encounter with the reef forced him ashore in the region now named in his honour, Cooktown. Let's look north of the Endeavour River there, just as James Cook would have seen it when he sailed in here to repair the boat. Look at that, there's not one bit of development on that north side of the Endeavour River. It's incredible. It's just wild, scary country, isn't it? It is, isn't it? End of the line. Eight weeks Cook spent here, and Grassy Hill was the first time he encountered an animal he christened the kangaroo. The Cooktown locals are proud of their association with Australia's most famous explorer. All the history books talk about Botany Bay, Botany Bay. and none of them talk about Cooktown. So they were there for four days in Botany Bay. And seven weeks here. Seven weeks here. This is where they really would have got a feel of what Australia was all about. Upon arrival in Cooktown, guests of Adventure North are allowed an hour and a half of free time. We've headed to Nature's Powerhouse, Queensland's second oldest botanic gardens, to learn more about the flora of the region. These are living specimens of the plants that they collected in 1770 when they were on board the Endeavour with Captain Cook. That's amazing. That's a great idea. So these were the first specimens taken back to Europe, had people scratching their heads going, I've never seen anything quite like That's it. That's exactly right. Native plantings aren't the only attractions at nature's powerhouse. Something I'm particularly interested in is the large variety of edible foods also available. Yeah. What is that? What is that? Rice paddy herb. So that's very uh, common in Southeast Asian cooking. Claire Richards is a cook, author and passionate advocate of what's available in her own backyard. Her award-winning book, Tropical Cuisine, is available at the Information Centre at Nature's Powerhouse, as well as online. This, for me, is just a whole new sort of culinary lexicon. It's magic, Alastair. It's fantastic. I mean, there's so much that we can grow here that comes from all around the tropics, from around the world. In this simple rice salad, locally grown herbs add a subtle perfume and flavour profile. Well, 
Well, my compliments to the chef, but who was the chef? Combined effort, mm. yes. I can't describe it as eloquently as my mate over there. Mm. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> a journey on Adventure North's Cooktown tour costs $250 per person and includes lunch and morning tea. Return by air for an additional $130 per person. To plan your own trip to the region, contact Tropical North Tourism. Or take a look at our website for links to the places that we've visited in the show. Well, an adventurous week in the rainforest, mate, and a fitting way to end it here in Cooktown. They call it the Wild West by the Sea. Time to say goodbye. Do you have fun? I had a great week. I tell you what, I can still taste that witchetty grub, though. <laughs> yeah, probably not your greatest culinary moment, no, hey? definitely mm. not. Hey, we won't be doing the bone-jarring run back to Cairns in the bus. In fact, we're going to jump on board the Cessna Caravan with the good guys and girls from Hinterland Aviation. I'll so jump on. You jump on, I'll say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. Seven news in just a moment from now. Sophie for Micah and the Great South East team back tomorrow afternoon at 5.30. Have a fabulous week. I'll see you next Saturday for more Queensland Weekender. Bye for now. Can you save me a seat? We have Tourism Queensland to thank along with RACQ and Queensland Rail Travel. And the Motorama Group has us covered when it comes to cars.